Great. Greetings, greetings, fellow grade 10s. It's Mr. Lajayo here. Welcome to Back to Basics. Look, what we are doing uh, today, we are looking at our statistics for grade 10s. And now we are looking, uh, this is going to be our KZN paper. I think this was uh, written in September 2022. Oh, good. Now we are looking at different past papers to try and understand in terms of how can we go about solving your statistics uh, questions, right? Now, uh, let's look at this one. Now, firstly, what is it that you are given here? They want us, uh, they are saying now the data below represents the daily rainfall uh, during the month of September in KwaZulu-Natal, right? So they want us firstly in 4.1.1 to determine the missing value in this particular table, right? And what is the missing value? It's A, it's B, and also it's going to be your C. Once again, now how can we then go about finding these missing values? Let's start. So now we are going to say, look, now starting from here, uh, if we uh, we want to find out firstly what are going to be these values, let's say we are going to start with what? We are going to start with the value of your or we are going to start with your value of your A. Now, I think you can see that from these particular formula, they say here it's midpoint multiplied by frequency. And in this particular line, you have what? You have 20, right? And you, you do have the what? You do have the midpoint, right? So which means now to find out what is going to be the frequency, can you see that it's going to be 20 divided by the 10, which is going to what? Which is going to be your 2. All right, so which means the value of your A here, it's going to be given by 2. How to get? Because this multiplied by this must give you your 20. How to get? And then now, how can we then find the value of your B, right? So to find out the value of your B, it's almost going to be one and the same thing, right? You are going to say your 250, right? 250 divided by your 5. And what is it that you're going to have? When you say 250 divided by 5, you are going to find out that this is going to be your 20. Or rather 20, uh, uh, 50. Why am I saying 20? This is going to be 50. Oh, we took it. So that's going to be, yes, the value of your B, which means now the B value is going to be your 50. And now, uh, if you look at the value of your C, right? Now, the value of your C, can you see that this is going to be 3 multiplied by 110 and what is 3 multiplied by 110 in this case this is going to be 330 oh it's again this is going to be 300 and, uh 330 right so that's going to be the value of your c so which means now you can literally just come here and substitute all these values you say here uh this one it's 330 this one it's 2 this one it's 50 oh it's again so, yes, that's going to be the first thing that you're going to do whenever you are calculating for the min, uh, for the missing values. Now, let's look at the next question. The next question requires uh, us to do what? Now, they say use the, uh, the table above to calculate the estimate mean of the rainfall, right? And uh, if you, you, you've been watching all these other videos, videos uh, I think I've overly emphasized on how we can calculate our estimate mean, right? But now, uh, what is it that you are going to do in this case, right? Remember, to calculate the estimate mean, you are going to add the midpoint multiplied by frequency, right? So, which means your mean, your estimate mean, it's going to be same as 20 plus 120 plus 250 plus 420 uh, plus your 720 uh, plus 330 plus 260, right? And then you are going to divide this by what? Now, how, which, what is it that you're going to divide this with? Then now you're going to say, uh, you're going to add this 2 plus 4, then plus 5, plus 6, plus 8, plus 3. I think when you add the 2, everything that you are going to add here, you're going to give you 30, right? So which means you're going to give, uh, divide everything by 30. So now, when you add all of these, what is it that you're getting? This, I think this is 2,120 divided by your 30, right? And now what is going to be this one? This is going to be 70,67, right? So this is going to be 70,67 uh, millimeters, which is going to be the value that you're going to find. Right, okay. So that's basically... Uh, what you are going to do whenever we are required to find out the value of your, of your mean. Now, let's look at your 4.1.3 then now. 
Uh, then the, your 4.1.3, they say it represents this particular data in your histogram, right? So I think most of us, we are familiar with how to do your histogram. But now let me just, uh, let me just help you with that, right? So now we are saying to find out your histogram, uh, what is it that you're going to do now? Obviously, you're going to draw, uh, you're going to draw your axis firstly. Uh, you're going to draw all your axis, right? Uh, this is going to be this one here, right? Uh, and then this one represents your frequency, right? This will represent your frequency, and this one will represent your rainfall, right? This will represent your rainfall. And then now, what is it then that you're going to do? Then you're going to, obviously, here, you can even do the scale, right? So uh, you can do the, the scale of, uh, let's see, starting from 20, let's see, this is going to be 20. Uh, let's say this is 40, this is 60, uh, this is 80, this is 100, this is going to be, uh, let's say this is 120, and probably this one is going to be 140. All right? Oh, it's okay. And then now, what is it that you're going to have here under your frequency? And then under your frequency, I, I know this one probably might not be, you know, uh, you know, let me just write it very nicely here. The hundred, at least when it's here. Yes. Now, and then now, uh, under your your frequency, then now you are going to use the scale of what? Now, given judging from the frequency, you are you are not having much values, right? So you can use just the scale of one. Let's say two. Let's say three. Then this is four. This is going to be your five. This is six. This is seven. And this is your eight, right? This is going to be your eight. Oh, it's okay. And then now, uh, and then uh, from here, then you can draw, right? Because you know that from zero, remember this is zero. So from zero to 20, you are having what? You are having two. So you are going to come to two and just connect here. Let's say this is like that. And this is like that, right? Yes. Uh, look at this line of mine here, but surely you can see. And then now, what else then now? Are we having then we are saying from 20 to 40 you are having four so which means you're going to now drag this to four right this is going to be something like this yes and then this is going to be here uh and then now from here what else then are you going to have and then now uh then the the next one you're having five which is from uh, 40 to 60, this is 5, so this is going to be a 5. Uh, this is going to be your 5, right? This is going to be from your 5. You are going back here, right? And then now from here, what else? Then now are you going to have, now you're going to have 6, then 6, it's going to be this one, right? This is going to be our 6. And then uh, from here, yes, this is going to be our 6. Right. Hopefully you can uh we can all see that, right? Yes, this is going to be our six. And now from here we are having our eight, right? This is going to be eight, which is I think this is going to be the highest bar, right? This is going to be your eight. I think your eight is going to be found here. And then this is somewhere here. All right. You are going please excuse my thickness of this block, right? Uh, and then now. And then after that, what else then are you having? Now, uh, after the eight, then you're coming back to the three. And the three is almost somewhere here, right? So you're going to start here. And then you're going to come back and do it uh, here, which is going to be your three. And uh, lastly, you're going to have what? Uh, lastly, you're going to have your... Uh, the last one is given by two. So your two, it's going to be almost something like this, right? Yes, your two is going to be something like this. Oh, it's okay. Uh, so basically, this is how we are going to write. Uh, uh, no, and then remember, for each and every graph, you must always write the what the topic of the graph, right? Uh, which is going to be the histogram. This is the histogram, which is showing, uh, showing what? Showing rainfall for September, right? Uh, showing rainfall. Uh, this is going to be the histogram showing rainfall. So basically, that's what you do whenever you are required to do a histogram, right? It's not really that much difficult, right? Hopefully, we can get that one. Now, let's look at your uh, your 4.1.4, uh, right? 
and see in terms of what is it that you're going to uh we can do now from here so in 4.1.4 what is it that you're going to do now that we've drawn our histogram now here they want us to find out what is going to be the median value right now to find out uh your median which is going to be your 4.1.2 now, what is it that you're going to do now? We are saying we have this formula for median and we are saying your median uh, is given by what? It's given by uh, this formula, which is 1 over 2 into n plus 1, right? This one help us firstly to find out the position of it, right? So this is going to 1 over 2 into the n. It's the total, which was 13 plus 1, right? So this is same as what? This is same as uh, 31. This is same as your 31, divide by 2, right? Uh, this is going to be 31 divided by 2, which is going to be 15,5, right? This is going to be 15,5. And after that, then we are going to come back and look for the value that whenever you are adding here, you're going to get a number that is going to be closer to your 15. And how can we do that, right? So for an example, let, let's let say now we start here. We are saying uh, 2 plus, uh, let's say 2 plus this one. Let me just use a different color, right? Uh, we are looking for our cumulative frequency. So a 2 plus 6, we are getting what? Uh, 2 plus 4, this is 6, right? So this gives you 6. And then uh, then 6 plus 5 gives you 11, right? 6 plus 5 gives you 11. And 11 plus 6, 11 plus uh, 6 gives you what? It gives you 17. Uh, oh, it's okay. And then now, can you see that? As soon as you are done with that, when you say uh, 17 plus 8, right? When you do your 17 plus 8, you are going to find out that you are having 25, right? You are going to have 25. So which means now the closest uh, cumulative frequency here that you are going to have, it's going to be from 16 to 80 because that's the what you are getting 17. Can you see that one, right? So which means it's going to be this one, right? So that's going to be the closest interval. So which means now uh, your median value here, it's going to be given by 60. Uh, the range of 60 to what? This is the range from 60 uh, to what? To your 8. So that's what you are going to do here. Basically, we are saying when you are adding to find out your cumulative frequency values, then as soon as you find out uh, the value that is going to be closer to the calculated median value, then that's the one that is going to give you what? That's going to give you your median class, right? Oh, it's okay. And now... Uh, after here, now they are looking for the 75th percentile, right? Uh, the one that is going to give us your 75th percentile. And 75th percentile, I, I can, you know, uh, it's also your upper quartile, right? Your upper quartile, if I'm not mistaken, because your 75th percentile, it's going to be, yes, it's going to be your upper quartile. And we do have the formula for that, right? So which means you're going to say it's 3 over 4 into N plus 1, right? And then now from here, what is it that you're going to do? So this is going to be 3 over 4 into brackets 30 plus 1, right? So let's see. Then when you are saying uh, now this is 3 over 4, when you say 3 over 4 in, uh, then 3 over 4, then you multiply it by what? You multiply it by 31. And then what is it that you're going to get? You're going to get uh, your 23. Oh, it's again. I think this is going to be almost 23, right? So this is going to be your, your 23, right? So as soon as you get your 23 comma something, right? So now then you're going to look for the value that is closer to 23, right? And then you'll realize that 25 here, the cumulative frequency of 25, it's the one that is the closest. Then now, uh, which means, oh, which means now this is going to be same as what? The, the interval that you're going to find, it's going to be between 80, right? This is going to be between 80 and also your 100, if I'm not mistaken, right? Look at me writing this like that. Let me fix that. Yes, it's going to be between 80 uh, and also your what? And also your 100. Yeah, this one doesn't have this inclusion sign, right? So basically, uh, that's the one that you're going to have. And now if you are looking for the class interval for your mode, the mode, it's the one that is having the highest frequency. And I think the one that is having the highest frequency against between 80 and 100, right? So which means for that particular question, it's going to be also 80 and also 100, right? Remember the one uh, mode we are saying, it is the one that is having the highest frequency, right? 
So the mode is going to be the one that is having your highest frequency. Hopefully all of this is making sense and you can, you know, be in a position that you understand all these types of questions. Thank you very much for listening.